You want to find gold? I'm going to show you how to use geology to find it. You see all these mountains behind me all the way down? That's all Aztec sandstone from the Jurassic and Triassic period. Now all that sandstone you see up there is about 150 to 165 million years old. As a geologist I can tell you right now there's not one speck of gold in those mountains or and the dolomite that's on the back of those mountains. Now knowing the geology is going to save you so much time because you can literally look at an entire mountain range and say I'm 99% sure there's no gold in there. Yes sandstone can have gold in it but not this sandstone and especially not the dolomite that's behind it. Now the dolomite does host a lot of other minerals through replacement deposits such as galena which is where you get your lead and silver from and sphalerite which is a zinc sulfide. The mountains are full of that but not a lot of gold, very small amounts. Only a few locations do these mountains actually give up gold. And there's a reason for that. And I'm gonna teach you the geology of that. And I'm even gonna tell you where these locations are at. Now all that Aztec sandstone used to be a huge sand dune that went all the way up into Utah. And then through a process called lithification, it became rock. And of course you have the keystone thrust here, which has pushed everything up. And you've got hematite mixed in all this sandstone. And that's why you got these red colors as it oxidizes out. Now, now, just bear with me there's a reason why I'm telling you all this okay so just keep them pants on here's that limestone I was telling you about this is actually on the sea floor at one time when Nevada had an inland sea and of course through lithification it has turned into a rock fossils right there where my thumb is now as you become more of an expert in this field of geology you're going to start using different tools to help you localize certain areas that have gold or possibilities of gold and that would be a geological map this is one of many different types of geological maps that you're probably going to see when you're researching mines. Geological maps are great if you know how to read them and interpret them. There's a lot of information in there that will correspond with your USGS reports and you can start localizing areas that might have potential gold deposits. And when I say gold deposits, I'm talking load gold. Now what you can do is overlay templates of known gold mines, abandoned gold mines, over the top of these geological maps and you'll start to see patterns forming. And the pattern is going to be where you start having all these thrust faults and contact zones, you're going to see a lot of these gold mines are sitting right on it or right near it. This is a great example of a geological map that has a template of existing mines laid over the top of it. This is drawn up by a mining company that's been sampling good springs for the last couple of years. Here you can see all the different rock structures and the fault zones that are incorporated in it, making it very easy to find potential load deposits. And you're also going to start seeing patterns of specific types of rock types that have mineralization in them. So a good example, like I was telling you earlier, is down here in the Spring Mountain Range, you have a lot of dolomite. It's limestone. In one specific area, you have a granitic intrusion. And if you remember, I told you one of the basic gold models is intrusion related deposits. And that's what you have there. And that's what we did. We found it on a USGS map, then we localized it using a geological map and of course an overlay of the surrounding mines. And lo and behold, we found one of the richest areas in the Spring Mountain Range. Now, if you haven't seen that video I made on the 10 gold deposition models, basic models, I'm gonna leave a link right here. Go ahead and click on it. It'll explain those 10 models. And keep in mind, those are basic models and off of those models come subcategories as well. I know you're asking, Jeff, we wanna know exactly where all this gold is. You have porphyry granite, which is intruded on the limestone. And what has happened is, is at those contact zones, you have a process called metasomatism taking place. And a lot of the gold Gold was originally in the porphyry granite and it migrated over to the contact zones and at those contact zones you have incredibly rich secondary enrichment zones of crystalline gold. Now I'm gonna tell you the name of the mines, but that doesn't mean I'm telling you to go run out there and dig up the people's property because these mines are on patent claims and the owner does not like a lot of people out there on his mines. You have the Keystone, you have the Chiquita, and you have the Oro Amigo. And not far from there is a fault system that created the Boss Mine. That's the one that has Jerosite and Plumbo Jerosite. Try to keep in mind that this is for this particular district. Every district is gonna have a different set of circumstances and a different type of deposition model. So it's not a, a one thing fits all. That's where you have to do your research and you have to understand your geology. And we're gonna continue to make more videos to teach you geology. But I think it's important we only teach you a little bit at a time because it's easier to understand and digest. And that way you're not overwhelmed so much. So right now what you need to remember is fault zones, contact zones, and when you have intrusion related deposits, look for limonite. 
You can't miss it, it's red, it's deep red, and it'll definitely stain your clothes if you get it on there. And it can have extremely rich values of gold. And this is gold that is precipitating and crystallizing inside the limonite. Go ahead and smash that like button. And in the future, we're gonna make more geology videos because I think it's important that you understand this. So when you get out in the field, after you've done your research, you know exactly what to localize and what to look for. And then you can go out, either find deposits that have been overlooked or find older deposits that can be reworked again because it's profitable with gold prices where they're at today. And here you can see limestone, and then down here you can see the decomposing granite right here. See how soft that is? Right here, this is what the old timers were looking for. This, we tested, has gold in it. This is what they were chasing. Now, when we looked it up on the USGS report, we found out that this mine on the other side of this hill produced somewhere in the average range of two ounces per ton. But as you can see, the vein travels at a 45 degree angle. And then if you look up towards the contact zones here, right here, that's nothing but solid iron in there. And you can see the pieces of solid iron that we chipped out of here last week. Because we're gonna take a rock drill and we're gonna drill into this, this uh, vein right here and we're gonna sample in further because the gold we got was fine with some small little flakes in it and I'm hoping the deeper we go uh, the bigger the pieces of gold will get so you want gold you gotta earn it I already see pieces of gold right there. Let's see if I can shake it down for you. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? Let's see if I can get some of that black sand off of there. Look at that. Oh, now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that. But all the gold is in these little pockets like this. In this, And there's lots and lots of it. Now a lot of the gold that's found in that area is not associated with quartz. It's associated with this material right here, which is limonite. Limonite is just a general term. Don't get caught up on it. It's usually red, has a lot of iron oxides in it. You also have two other minerals called jerosite and plumbled jerosite, and those deposits are extremely rich too. They're usually found with a copper halo around the lens. And some of the areas where they found gold inside of those lenses assayed out at 117 ounces per ton. Try to get your mind around that. Here's video that we shot many years ago of the mine that we're talking about. It's up on the hill overlooking Sandy Valley. Of course, a lot of the areas that have gold have these markings around them. And a lot of the halos that I described earlier of copper carbonates are around the jerosite and plumbable jerosite. Here's a good example right here where this pocket is very rich. You can find these all throughout the mine inside this one particular level. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite, and you can see jerosite and plumbable jerosite in there as well. And then of course you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. And a lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them, and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. The interesting thing about the gold that's here is that it's from secondary enrichment zones. The enrichment zones are basically limonite that have formed in between the contact zones of the porphyry granite and the limestone, the dolomite. Now years ago, BLM came out here and they brought in two, I don't know how they got them up here on the mountain, but they brought in two bulldozers and they took all the material from on top of the hill, I watched them do it, and they brought it all the way down to here because they wanted to seal this up. It doesn't make much sense to me because the, what they're trying to seal up was a sill where they were finding rich gold. So it wasn't a safety concern. It was more like a, we're going to keep this on hold till later kind of concern. I was here before they brought in the bulldozers and it was flat. There was no holes, no shafts, no nothing. I've explored this mine thoroughly. There was not a problem. So why would they do that? So I'm thinking they wanted to keep this place on hold for themselves. It's the only thing I can think of. But the gold that was coming out of here is very pure because of the secondary enrichment, which means the gold was in this porphyry granite, this decomposing granite that you see here. 
and then up against the limestone sections like you see here you would have a process called metasomatism taking place where the gold would literally migrate from the granite porphyry and form in the contact zones right here see that all that has gold in it and the usgs reports always say that wherever you see this green talc the gold is very rich and they find the green talc where the veins flatten out not where they're vertical or steeply dipping but where they level out so we're going to give this a shot today see if we can find any gold in it and then I'll keep you posted and I'll teach you some more geology along the way. Now that is one of the old stopes. I know it's hard to believe, but if you go in there, it opens up. They were pulling all the limonite off the back of this decomposing granite or porphyry granite. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but that is the end of a stope. I've been in there before and it opens up and the old timers were in there on their bellies cutting out the limonite seams that are up against the limestone. And of course they had to carve out all of this granite porphyry it's like saprolite it's decomposing you can dig it with your finger the interesting thing about this granite porphyry is that there's actually tiny bits of gold in it so a lot of the mine dumps in this area have a little bit of gold in it now you're not going to get rich in fact you probably have to move a few metric tons to get anything worthwhile it gives you a slight understanding of how these seams of limonite were formed inside the mine that i'm standing on down below these seams are up to five feet thick. And because you have secondary enrichment from polymetallic replacement deposits, this stuff is extremely rich and it's in wire form too. No quartz, just limonite. And sometimes you'll have manganese oxide coating the outside, kind of like peg legs gold, if you remember that. We're gonna take all that juicy red material and we're gonna run it through a dry washer. And then I'm gonna take my little battery powered hammer drill and I'm gonna chip out what limonite is in there, collect the dust, run it through the dry washer. And then the bigger chunks will take back and grind it up. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm not gonna do nothing until you smash that like button. Smash it hard! Once you get a good look at this these are the layers of green talc that the old timers talked about and they said wherever the vein flattens out below 45 degrees in dip you're going to see these green talc beds starting to form and they said wherever you see that any limonite that is sitting on top of that very rich so that's why i'm all excited about this one particular zone here yeah that looks good and that looks good but the green talc is what i'm interested in i'm going to continue blowing this out and then later i'm going to give you another geological lesson that's going to help you locate these things and i'll tell you how i found this one myself that way you can get out there find your own gold mine now here's your next geological lesson i'm sitting on a bed of dolomite and there was a sill of porphyry granite the sill was extremely rich and of course they removed the sill and inside the mountain there are two dikes and they removed a lot of the material i've actually been in there and there's huge stopes in there and it goes down to about maybe the three 400 foot level. The reason why I got you here is because I found this area, first of all, by looking on USGS reports. That's number one. And when I saw that the beds of limonite were carrying gold from secondary enrichment, I was on top of it real quick. And when I saw that there was a sill involved, not just two dikes, I says, you know what? The sill has still have to have gold on it because sills sit flat, dikes sit straight up and down, or to some degree. I'm telling you this is because if you see that in the USGS reports, you need to get on it and you need to get boots on the ground and you need to prospect and sample. And that's what we're doing. Now, the reason I got you over here on top of this dolomite is because I can see all this beautiful red limonite. And of course, all the host rock and there's a little copper mixed in there too. Look what mother nature has done for me. You see it? She's basically washed a lot of this old overburden off and what left all the good juicy stuff inside because i've got bedrock here so i'm going to dig out some of the limonite i'm going to dig out whatever's in this creek because i know there's little pieces of gold in here i'm going to put that in a bucket 
and then I'm gonna run that through a dry washer too. And that's what you should be doing too. Let mother nature do all the work. I always tell you about bedrock, but when you're out here around special areas like this, look for where mother nature's already did a lot of the washing for you. And what you're gonna do, just like in a sluice box, start at the top, dig a lot of this material out. If you really wanna know where the gold's at, break it into sections and sample it individually. Unfortunately, I've got rain clouds over my head. I don't have much time, so I'm just gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna run it through the dry washer. We'll take it back, we'll crush the harder stuff, and then I'll pan out the stuff we got out of the dry washer, and then I'll show you what- You'll need to be online. What was that? <laughs> so then I'm gonna show you what the gold looks like because there's tons of gold here. It's really beautiful because it's in wire forms and a little dendritic too. And then I'm gonna tell you some secrets about gold, how it can actually precipitate out of this material under the right conditions. So let's get onto it. That almost looks like cinnabar, don't it? Look at that. That's part of the old sill I was telling you about. You see it? It looks like cinnabar, but it's not. When this video reaches 100,000 yeah. views, I'm gonna take you inside there and I'm gonna show you some of the richest veins you've ever seen. And I'll go over some more stuff here in a minute. But right now, I gotta hurry. I'm just about out of daylight and I can feel that rain coming. So dry washers are no good in the rain. Now, if this is your first time here and you don't know how to set up a dry washer, I made a fantastic video that explains all my tips and tricks on how to set these little guys up, especially the Keen 140S, which is one of my go-to dry washers when I'm out here in the field. I'm gonna leave a link right there just click on it, watch it, and it'll give you all of my tips and tricks, most of them anyway, so you can get out in the field and start finding gold. These are not only good production machines, but they're great samplers too, because I can take this thing out in the field, I can sample an area, put it in its own proprietary container, mark it, and then when I get back to the house, I'll know exactly what came from where. If it does have a lot of gold, I'll bring that or even a bigger machine. So these are great sampling machines, so don't think they're just for production. So we're gonna go ahead and put some jet dry in the water and that's gonna break the surface tension on this water so the really super fine gold doesn't float on top. Remember, don't wear any good clothes if you plan on panning limonite. What is that? If you guys wanna to try to find your own gold mine, I highly recommend you reading our latest book, Where to Find Gold. It's got over 40 years of experience in it and the graphics are really easy to understand. Now don't forget, at the end of this month, we're giving away a Gold Monster 1000 metal detector and a whole bunch of bags of pay dirt from the drift mine. All you gotta do is look for the little link at the end of the video that looks something like that. You're gonna click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flynn. And if you wanna see more videos on finding gold deposits that are hidden out in the desert, go ahead and watch this video right here and I'll see you on the next video.